future and past, all that stuff was taken away from him. To me, it seemed like when he says about his future and he mentions children and grandchildren like that, he hasn't had any of those yet. That it, because he's specifically just talking about getting his wife back mm. because he wants to have a, like, I feel like he doesn't have, like, his own family unit. You know what I mean? Like, other parents, siblings, or whatever might be around, but I feel like that was his thing. So it's like, well, maybe now he'll do less on the death ray, time ray thing, and have a family and spend time with them. You know, we don't want this Mm -hmm. to turn into the cats in the cradle. I'm making a lot of, like, song references. (laughs) (laughs) Cats in the cradle. Oh, man, that's a deep cut. (laughs) Oh, we're going to have people, like, really blowing up the internet looking for things that I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, and everybody will be calling things handsome. It'll be great. <laughs> also, Stephen, I love that you used the word tomfoolery. Amazing. Also a good word. I, I'm a fan of I'm a fan of those really good sounding words that you don't hear very often. So, like, mm-hmm. tomfoolery, uh, scallywag. Oh, that's, Ooh, a, that's a good one, right? Fisticuffs. Like, you don't hear them <laughs> that often. But I think my absolute favorite word that I just love the way it sounds, and you'd never hear it hardly anymore, is the word scrumptious. Mm. I absolutely... <laughs> How did I know you were going to say that? That's weird. How did you, did you know? That is weird. Um, I absolutely love that word, scrumptious. And I wish people would use it more. Use it. Try try to use it in a sentence once a day if you can. <laughs> um, on a different note, I hate when people use like delicious to mean something that doesn't that you can't taste. I don't know why. Oh. I just don't like it. I don't like it as an adjective unless it has to do with taste. That's, That's how my wife like, is with the word sexy. Like sometimes I see like an Audi because I love Audis, and I'm like, man, look how sexy that new Audi looks. And she just like, no, that's a vehicle. You do not want yeah. to have intercourse with that vehicle. Do <laughs> right? not call that's it sexy. I think, too. And I say, you don't know what I want to have with that vehicle. So. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me. You don't know me. Oh my First of all, I do what I want. Second of all, <laughs> like, listen, Janeway in this episode. She's great, and then she loves Voyager, so we're just gonna have a three way with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, all cause... of a sudden it's like Janeway is about the about Voyager, like Jordy think, is. <laughs> yeah, the only person that can sleep with a starship is Jordy LaForge, I think. That's that's absolutely. The... Yeah, and Jordy he actually LaForge, has done it, right? He is in <laughs> love with the Enterprise. And you cannot change my mind. It's like that meme with the guy at the desk changing my mind. You can't change my mind because <laughs> well, he, it's it's a fact. He's technically <laughs> slept with it too, right? He has because he was in the holodeck with that Leo Brown. Dr. Brown, yeah. And, exactly. and that's, a, that's an extension of the Enterprise. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he slept with the, he slept with the ship. That's all I'm saying. He slept with the ship. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh! I hate to bring it back, but back onto words that I really like. Um, oh, I used no. to have this, this this older lady that I worked with, and she used to use the word cattywampus all the time. Yes, I say that. and, and I, I, at, at first I was like, man, that is just an ancient term. But then years later, I found myself every time described, I'm like, uh, does this? picture look a little cattywampus to you on the wall and it's just like second nature now so i'm bringing it back 2020. i love that so <laughs> listeners what are some of your favorite words yeah tweet at us favorite words at the say. picard cast on twitter <laughs> and tell us your favorite words <laughs> you know just well, trying to throw it back to our thing yeah and this one was a lot shorter which is kind of funny but um yeah i think we covered it all it was. It's a good story. I'm glad. I, I appreciate you picked this one. Yeah. I don't know. You got anything else to say about the story, either one of you? Just it's a, it's a great pick for an episode to talk about. Well, thanks. Yeah. I just. Uh, I I love Voyager and I like to celebrate it when it deserves it. And um, you know, just like every other series, it has episodes, large chunks of episodes that you could probably just go ahead and skip. 
but this one was certainly not one of them, and I wanted to talk about it and celebrate it because it had little micro themes within it. And, um, you know, I, I recently watched um, the episode where um, – oh, I was just talking about it in the, in the group check, and it makes me cry. And it's weird because, oh, my goodness. Now, I brought it up on a podcast, and now I can't remember what episode <laughs> it is. I know it was season six because I'm doing a season six rewatch. But anyway, the point is, is that, that for some reason, this series gets to me the most. Just the, the, the idea of isolationism and being away from everybody and having to make it on your own and you know, meeting, you know, strange new – you know, people like and, and 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 species and everybody you encounter is somebody that that the Federation doesn't have any data information on and you know and oh actually so the episode was the episode with uh, uh, Lieutenant uh, Barkley uh, wanting to figure out a way to communicate with Voyager. Oh sure, yeah yeah yeah. And like I just that just I love it because how obsessed he was with with communicating with these people because. Because, you know, think about it, like, you know, they've been gone for five years at that point. And, you know, if Starfleet is going to list off, you know, current starships in, in operation, they're not going to list Voyager. Like, it just does, doesn't exist to them anymore. You mm-hmm. know, it's not something they can rely on or, you know, say, hey, well, you know, we can bring them in if we need. No, it's it's just gone. But, like, the whole place had, has written off Voyager, but Lieutenant Barkley had not. And, you know, the fact that he was able to – I mean, can you imagine being completely on your own for five years and then all of a sudden, like, getting a message from Starfleet? Like, Mm -hmm. how much hope would that inspire? Like, thinking you're completely alone and then realizing that you could could still – like, they're they're still out there, you know? And I don't know. That that episode gets me. And and all of Voyager, just the whole theme of them being on their own is – is something that I, I really love. And, uh, you know, because in every other series, you know, at any given time, you know, it might be a couple of weeks, but they can get back to Earth at any given time. But Voyager is completely on their own and, and they got to keep it together. And, you know, of course it's fiction, but Jan- Janeway does what she can to bring the ship back home as a Federation ship. You know, not as a ship of just like a, a random handful of survivors. Like, no. We're still like have ranks and uniforms and we still adhere to the principles of the Federation. And it's just a cool theme. And I think this episode, this two part arc really kind of embodies the whole feel of of being stuck out there on your own and and just basically having to do what you can to survive. So that's why I picked this one. Cool. Cool. Well said. (laughs) Thanks. But I, I appreciate you guys having me on again. I, I mm-hmm. love coming on. And anytime you ever need a voice, uh, I'm, I'm right here. So Awesome. Well, if we ever do our she podcast, we'll make you watch that and come on there for sure, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I would, I'd love to watch it. I'd like to watch it with my wife. Her being the, uh, the, the pretty strong feminist that she is, I, I think sounds like she would enjoy it. Yeah. So. I think she would. Yeah. Cool. I don't know why cool is the only cool. uh, word I have today, but <laughs> all right. So um, that's it. We'll um, we'll talk to you all later. Uh, thank you for listening and boldly go where no one has gone before. Bye. hosted by Rebecca and Brooke. You can find us at facebook.com slash picardcast, on twitter.com at thepicardcast, or email us at picardcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and boldly go where no one has gone before.